All right, guys, we're back with another video. Glad to be with you. Had a nice weekend, I hope you guys did too. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, it sounds a little bit better. We got new audio, we got a new microphone, so you will be able to enjoy the video without that crappy tinny on camera mic. Um, very happy about that, I hope you'll enjoy the video better. I also did a little bit of audio monitoring, so the sound should be a little bit better quality. The uh, music should not be taking over the video like it was before. It's a learning process, guys. Uh, I was a still photographer for many years, a uh, commercial photographer, but uh, video is still something kind of new to me. And and I'm learning, but I think I'm doing pretty good. Anyways, so we're back with uh, another piece on the train that we started last week, or maybe about a week before last, I don't remember. Um, but I got the lettering already spelled out just so we can kind of move on and get going with it. Um, and again, we're using Molto markers. These are the uh, 127HSs and the 227HSs. If you haven't used these, these are the best paint pens in the world. In the world, by far. Um, Water-based, so they don't smell, see? They don't smell at all. So you can use them indoors, unlike the decos, they won't stink up your house. Um, and they're refillable uh, simply by unscrewing the barrel. Uh, this one might be a little tight on there. Let me see if I can get this one off. Sometimes they take a little bit of work. Let me see if I have one that's already unscrewed. All right. So yeah, you can unscrew these and refill them uh, just simply by turning the barrel counterclockwise. Removing that, pulling out the valve, and refilling it. Molotov actually makes some refill extensions, and we'll cover that in another video too. They're really great because it keeps your hands from getting all wet. So um, look out for that in a future part of the video. Uh, anyway, so yeah, they're refillable, and Molotov really fills the marker up. You get a ton of paint in these things. If you ever felt a deco, they're only filled up about this far. Um, or even like the uh, Unibroad markers, they're only filled up this far. But when you order a Molotov marker, they cost more, but you get a full tank of ink. Uh, that will last you quite a long time and on top of that you can replace the nibs you can refill them You can put different types of nibs on them. I mean this is a marker for a lifetime guys You don't throw this away you keep it refill it if it dries out clean it out with some soapy water some acetone or whatever Put a new nib you're back in the game boy. These are lifetime purchase anyways So we're back with the train um, this is going to be a piece that says stone tier and this was for our political art show we had at the Seattle shop, but um Fortunately, I wasn't able to get it done in time. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about stone tier later. It's kind of funny. But the colors we're gonna be using are the Molotov uh, 227 HS. This is the Grasshopper Green, which is by far one of my favorite colors of green. Uh, a little custom concoction I made, I call it Pepe Green. It's a mix of um, the Mr. Green and a little bit of white, I believe. We'll, we'll go back and look into that. Uh, also, I'm using the Burgundy Red in the 127 HS. Uh, I got a... Uh, a turquoise in the 127HS. I have the new magenta in the 127HS. Uh, and cacao 77 green in the 127, but I have the 1.5 millimeter crossover nib on that. This is also one of my favorite colors too. Big fan of green. Also, I have some uh, Lagoon Pastel. This is that blue that you really got to shake up. So if you ever get this color, make sure you shake the hell out of it in order to make sure it's nice and uh, consistent. But this is a great shade once you do. Of course, we've got Signal Black. And I have um, Future Green for the dark 3D outline because I wanted to use something else other than black. So I guess we're not using black. I'm sorry. My apologies. This will be our 3D color, Future Green. It's a nice dark... Um, I would say like a black forest green color or British racing green would be another example. So people who are into like British racing cars, they know what kind of shade I'm talking about. Um, this fantastic shade. You don't have to use black to outline, guys. You can use pretty much whatever color you like. Anyways, enough about the markers. Let's get let's get to the meat of the matter here. So I've already did this piece, which you guys saw, uh, was it two weeks ago? Um, what we did is we started by clear coating the train and I had an old can of clear coat that was kind of yellow So I was like great this will kind of give it like an aged effect because initially this was a damaged product It had a scratch on it um, And I did some kind of splatter effects uh, and then I took some uh, charcoal pencil and just kind of rubbed it in to kind of create like a dirtiness, like an old dirty rail car. And then I painted over it again with a high quality, like a good 
clear matte. And what I used was the, the Molotow clear transparent. And this stuff is phenomenal. It's a, it's a matte finish, they have a gloss, but for stuff like this, you wanna use a matte finish. The reason why is it gives the surface a little bit of tooth. It makes it a little bit rough, so the marker, the marker interacts with it and creates a better line. Trust me on this, try a water-based marker on a rough surface, try it on a smooth surface, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But for these types of projects, just get one can of this and you're good for a few years, I imagine. I mean, you don't take much to use it. But this is great on the little model trains, uh, vinyl toys, uh, pretty much anything that's plastic you wanna ride on or anything that's smooth. Put a layer of this down first and you're good to go. And this stuff is crystal clear. Make sure you use the Molotow product. Um, anyway, so again, I have the, I have the piece written out, and uh, let's just get cracking. Let's just start let's start drawing it in. At first, I did it with a pencil, just so you guys know. And that what's also really good about doing the matte finish is uh, a graphite pencil will just pick up right on the surface beautifully. So I went ahead and laid it out with a pencil, and then I clear coated it again. That way, the uh, Molotow marker when I went over the pencil marks will not react with it and you know you don't want that to happen because then it'll make everything look muddy and in the past we've talked about doing white base coats but I imagine a lot of you probably won't be doing that so we're just gonna go ahead and lace it in as is but like I said in other videos putting down a layer of white definitely will make the colors pop more so anyways just go ahead and move on through you can use the wet on wet technique I had told you about where you kind of just go over your previous line and uh, you know just give it a little bit of a overlay and the paint will gel together just nicely all right I want this to go a little bit higher um, we'll talk a little bit more about how to draw letters in another video this is more of just a review on the markers and I want you guys to see how tight they are so we'll go ahead and run through this again this is the grasshopper green Molotow fantastic color it really is oh yeah look at that <clears throat> all right so let me go ahead and lace this in this will probably require two coats of the green uh, especially since I'm going over the black here it's not really reacting with it but it's just so dark that the black is kind of overpowering it so let's make sure we do a couple coats on that Oh, also in this video, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at some video comments and see what you all have to say. Um, ever since I started doing these videos again, I've been getting swamped with emails from people. Um, lots of young cats hitting us up, just saying thanks for supporting them. And that makes me feel so good, dude. Because like, like I said in the past video, it's the youth that drive this industry. It's the youth that drive the culture. You know, it's the kids that make it what it is. I just hope I can be a, a steady hand and help you guys along. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you can learn from my mistakes. And, that, and, and I actually get a lot of questions like that because Lord knows I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. But I'm still here. I'm still alive. And that's kind of where I want you guys to be. Still alive, getting paid, getting laid, being made in the shade, and not being afraid. Just do you. Be that base to you you always wanted to be. That's who I want you to be, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish filling this in. And we're gonna wait for this to dry. We'll pause the video, we'll pause this portion of the video and maybe we'll look at some video comments and uh, while this dries and talk about some music. I'm listening to DJ Sheep again, by the way. And uh, let me see which, uh, which track this is. This is a Salamander Street Catastrophe, 1988 to 1993 rap mix. The golden era of rap, I might say. My era of rap, when I was in junior high and high school. Graduated in 93, by the way. Just so you guys have an idea how old I am. Um, I've been around the block a few times. Anyways, so let's add a little bit here. I think there needs to be a bit there, don't you guys think? Just a happy little bit. Just put a happy bit right there. Just a little happy guy. Uh, maybe a happy little bit. Oop, there goes my left hand. See that? You gotta be careful when you're left-handed, guys. So notice I'm holding my wrist up. There we go. Another bit right there. All right, dope. So let's let that chill for a second. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Oh yeah, we got another type of clear coat too. While that's drying, let's talk about Spray Max. 
Some of you automotive guys will know this stuff. We carry it here. This is the world's best clear coat. And you're like, why? It looks like crap. The bottle design is ugly. I know, it's an industrial product. The reason why it's the best is it's a 2K clear. And what that means, it's a two part catalyzing clear coat, like the stuff they clear coat cars with. So if you do like mural art on like a hood of a car, you know, you paint some like sick ass, like Aztec dude holding some like naked Aztec lady, you know, on a mountaintop, right? You know what I'm talking about. That's my kind of art. And you want to protect it. So what you do is you use something like this because a 1K clear coat can be affected by solvents, alcohol, you know, mineral spirits and stuff like this. This stuff creates a chemical reaction that hardens it, much like automotive paint, because it is an automotive paint. And, um, and those of you who are familiar with these type of paints were probably wondering how they're able to do it in a can because usually you have to mix them together in a, in a container and then spray them out of a spray gun. Well, our lovely friends, our lovely German engineers have come up with a new way to do this. Inside this can is another can. Can you believe that? There's another can, check this out. It's coming out the bottom like that. Now you don't spray out of here. What this does is it creates a, an opening inside that mixes the two materials together to create the hardening product. So once it's activated, you have to use it right away. Well, within I think like eight hours or whatever, or it starts to harden in the can. So this is for professional work, okay? If you're getting paid to do a mural art on someone's car or something like that, you need to be buying this stuff to protect it because your client's gonna come back in three years and say, man, I don't know what you clear coated it with, but it looks like you painted it yesterday. And that, my friends, is how you retain customers and get more business. And also, we're actually gonna talk about that. Um, a lot of you kids think you can't do professional murals. You can, and I will teach you how to do it. It's a lot easier than you think, and you can make a little bit of money at it and get a little paint in the process. I mean, you might not get rich, but at least you can pay for your paint. Isn't that tight? I think it's pretty tight. Let's see if um, this paint's dried off yet. It's still a little wet, so we'll go ahead and let that chill. Um, and maybe we can talk about some video comments. Just one second, all right, guys? All right, sick. So this is the part where we start um, doing our little splash on the background. Normally I do this first, but you know, we can we can do it the second step. It's whatever. You're your own grandpa. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and lace this in and uh, you know, just start using the lines and whatnot. And while we do this, why don't we take a look at some YouTube comments. Uh, let's take a look at the most recent video we did. Let's see, what do we have here? That was that was the airbrush video, right? Pretty sure that was the airbrush cap. Let me pull that up. Our primo airbrush cap. All right, let's take a look at some of the top comments on here. Jeweler TV says graffiti's for everyone, but Wu Tang is for the kids. R.I.P. Dirty Old Bastard, or Old Dirty Bastard, excuse me. And that is true, my brother. R.I.P. Old Dirty Bastard, ODB. Um, I'll help you film for caps. That was Geo Sun. Salivo Production says fly us over. <laughs> All right, I don't know if I can do that yet. Um, oh, Poison Joe is back. He says, damn, I'm gonna have to get some of these. Also those pink magic broads. Also, hella mad respect for acknowledging us trans folk. That's fucking awesome and legit. Makes me wanna buy AP more. Trans friendly business gets my cash. What's up, Poison Joe? You're always welcome here with the fam. We like everybody. All stripes, all color, all everything. Uh, and then someone else, Infinite One, said, Poison Joe, Trans American Graffiti. I smell a documentary. Possibly, maybe we'll go follow Joe around one of these days. Uh, Lucas Valdez says, great, there goes my paycheck. I feel you, brother. I work here. I know how it is. Fedor Tamas says, music level, bro. Turn it down lower, please. Please. I hear you, brother. Hopefully we got it better this time. <clears throat> Let's see what else is going on here. Hilas Cap, love from Greece. What's up, my Grecian homies and homieettes? All y'all out there. Hope you're doing good. Uh, Gage Cormier says, watching from Connecticut. Thank you very much, keep it up. Thank you, Gage. I hope you're doing good out there. Connecticut's pretty cracking. It's beautiful in the fall. Uh, Landy N. Gonzalez says, Ay, I'm part Cuban too. Orale, homie. Oh, well, that's kind of a Mexican phrase, but that's chill. We, we All right, dope. It. So we are at a good point. We got some double layers of the paint, and I think it's looking pretty good. 
Unfortunately, there's a section of the video I filmed and I forgot to turn my microphone on. So my apologies, I'm still learning here. Um, so let's go ahead and lace in our outline. And again, I'm using this burgundy red. And yep, that looks wonderful. Oh yeah, let's tie it all together, guys. After this, we'll start lacing in our fill. And then uh, I think we'll be good, guys, right? What do you guys think about that burgundy hitting off on that magenta? I think they do pretty good together, don't they? I like it. Graffiti's so awesome. I love it. Okay. So cool, we got that outlined. It's looking pretty good. Uh, so the next step, I think what I'm gonna do is start lacing in our fill colors. And I think the first color we did on this was the, uh, what is this? Lagoon Blue Pastel. I'm always, always forgetting the name of it. Also known as Lago. I think it's called Lago. Oh, yeah, some kid was asking me what I write. Um, I won't tell you what I write, but you see these two rats? I painted them on a rail car a while back. So if you ever see these floating around, that's me. In fact, you know what? The first person that sees it and photographs it and emails it to me, I'll send you a, a free gift. You'll get something special. But yeah, big cheese style, look for that. On an arm in train. That's me, guys. All right, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and lace in that blue. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. Mm. I think we're on to something here, dudes. All right. So after we do this, um, we're gonna lace in that um, that turquoise color too. We got a little bit of that. The thing with the fill is you can kind of overdo it sometimes, so just keep it easy. I overdo it sometimes too, um, so don't sweat it. Sometimes you just paint a stinker. That's just the way it goes. But this one's coming out really nice. I think I think this train is really cool. I would flick it if it rolled by. All right, let's see. Maybe just a little bit more. Not too much more, just a little bit. Let's see, maybe just a few more. There we go. Man, this mix is pretty tight. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. I think the audio is a lot better for you, thankfully. All right, so dope. So we got those in there. I think the next part, we're gonna lace in the uh, Cacao 77 green. Make sure it's well shaken. Get the nib saturated so it writes, and then uh, start doing it. You know, just freestyle it. it. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to be kind of weird and you know, almost like a tremor line or a crack or like a heartbeat or something, you know, electric lines, whatever you want to call it. Just gives it a little bit more, um, kind of shakes things up. You know, you feel me? Yeah. All right, a couple little bits here and there. All right, dope, so let's go to the next step. So we're at the next part of the video. Uh, I'm gonna start lacing in that green, and like I said, this is my custom shade that I call Pepe Green. Cause it's like Pepe the Frog Green. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So let's just lace a couple bubs in, a little bub and rub, a bub and rub and tug. Get those in there and you want to overlap them a little bit just to give it a little bit more depth you know and this is all 
this is all freestyling, right? I mean, you can just do whatever you want. You don't have to copy my style. You can find your own. Um, but you know, it's cool. Just do what you want. You're your own grandpa. I trust you'll figure it out. <clears throat> but you know, I do like the old school, simple, easy to read. But we'll get it. We'll get into some other stuff. We'll definitely uh, explore more wild style stuff later. But you know, my audience is. I you know, I'm, I want to help people who are just starting out. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I get emails from like people who are experts. You know, and they're like complaining about the videos, and I'm like, well, you're already a pro. What does it matter to you, right? I mean, you don't need my videos. But I mean, then I, then again, I get e emails from pros who watch my videos just because they like them. They watch them with their kids and stuff. So that's kind of why I'm trying to watch my language now. I got so many youngins watching these videos, you know. And you know, I can think of more. I can think of better things than the colorful metaphors that I use. All right, guys, we're on the next part of the video. Uh, I got this 127 with the two millimeter tip. This is that 253 turquoise in the Molotow. In German, it's turkeys, turkeys. I'm sure the guys in Europe will probably tell me I pronounced that wrong. Nevertheless, this is a sick color. Same color as the Molotow turquoise. And what we're gonna do is just add a couple little bits into the fill. Don't wanna overdo it. But I think on the round parts, they look really good. Usually what I like to do is like a fat one first and then add a couple of skinny ones next to it. Something like this. This is the classic old school style. And then maybe one skinny one at the bottom. Let me fix that. Perfect. All right, and then let's add one on the E. I think the E should take one as well. We'll skip one on the A just to kind of just to kind of mix it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You know, you don't want it all in the same spot. I mean, you can. You can do whatever you want, really. Um, oh, and let's add one on the T here. Since the T goes on this direction, we'll do it a little different style. Like that. Beauty, eh? All right, that looks pretty good. So let's let that bad boy chill. Then we gotta do the outline, and then the shine, and then we're done, son. We're done. All right, let's let that dry real quick. <clears throat> All right, dope, yeah. So this is the part where we put the outline, the final outline, and then rock maybe some uh, shines on this bad boy. Uh, then we can clean it up and call it good. So I got this here, what color is this again? This is the Future Green. The Molotow 227HS in Future Green. I'm using that in lieu of a black because I think it great, creates a better flow of color. Um, you know, it just looks nicer than just rocking black all the time. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start doing the outline. And if you guys watch the, uh, the uh, scrap can piece video, we're gonna use the same technique that we did with the spray paint. And that is when you have two meeting points, don't start from the meeting point, start from outside and work your way into it. Does that make sense, guys? Because if you start here and move out, you're gonna have a big blotch because you laid down the line. So at the edge of the end, just like that, you'll get a smoother, you'll get a smoother meeting point that way. Got a little bit of overlay, but that's no big deal. We'll fix that. <clears throat> but at least the meeting point looks better, and that's what matters. Remember, outside in. Outside in. Beautiful. Outside in. Beautiful. All right, now let's do the A. Do that swoop down to the end. Take your time. If your lines don't come out quite perfect, don't worry about it. You can just re-go over it. Uh, it is paint, so you can easily just repaint that spot you messed up. That's the beauty of paint markers. Remember, outside to in, outside to in. All right, let's see where this E is before we go messing with the, uh, the A there. Yeah, that's looking good, that's looking good.
All right, let's go ahead and add that bit in from before. Oh, almost forgot this part. We'll come back with the other green and clean that up a little bit. Um, let's, let's bring this in a little bit too, just to give it a little bit more depth. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. All right, now for the T. Beautiful. How are you guys doing there at home? You following along? All right, now this part. Oh, baby, I love it. Again, this one. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so dope. We got the basic outline in, so now here comes the cleanup part, and then the shines, and then I think we'll be done. See, I'm resting my wrist on here, just so you know. All right, wait, before we do the cleanup and the shines, let's go ahead and 3D this bad boy. And again, we were just doing a, uh, just like a thickened line on one side, on the left-hand side. So just go ahead and follow the same line. Basically just making it a triple thick line. Does that make sense? Go one, two, three. There's your 3D. One, two, three. On the overlap 3D, just do two, um, just so it doesn't look too crazy. Um, add a little bit of there. One, two, three. Just fill that in. One, two, that will that will just fill in right there. In fact, just fill that in all together. One, two. Looking good, looking good in the hood. All right, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Now on the end, one, two, and three. Perfect. All right, next step is um, we're gonna do some cleanup and then on the 3D overlaps, wherever it overlaps, just give it a little bit, just do a double line, not a three line. Just gives it a little bit more depth over here on the A. Beautiful, on the E where it overlaps the A. All right, and then right here. Beautiful, looking good. All right, let's, uh, let's kind of clean up these lines. Thicken it up right here. Now this isn't quite perfect because I kind of veered off, but that'll be fixed with a shine. So no worries about that. All right, looking good, looking good. All right, let's fix this. Hit those rivets up there so it made it a little bit thicker than I wanted it, but no big deal. That's what pins are for. All right, I can't wait to put the shines on this bad boy. I think it'll really turn the lights on. All right, well that's drying. Let's go back to some of these other spots. See right here where this line's a little thick? Actually, it's a little bit wet still, so let's let this chill while it dries and then we'll be back. Dope, so this section's dried. Let's go ahead and start laying in some shines and cleaning up the rest. Remember, when you got the intersect on the inside, make sure you start from the outside in. If you got an outside intersection, you can start from that point because the shine will be a little bit thicker there, you feel me? So go ahead and run your line. Beautiful. Now this one. Perfect. To the end. To the end. 
And uh, let's see, we don't have to shine on that side. In fact, we probably didn't even have to put one there, but you know, what the hell, I'll just leave it. All right, looking good, looking good. A little shine right there. All right, let's let's uh, let's get this bad boy going. Perfect. Beauty, eh? Looking good. A shine on top here. All right, I think we're about done with this. I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know about you guys. That way we can move on to some other videos. All right, dope. So we got a few little bits here. Let me just add a few of these and like that, just to kind of, you know, give it a little bit more depth. Inky, go away. All right, yeah, so I'm just adding a few little bits and stuff like that. Just thought it'd be fun to just kind of make it break it up a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Leave that be, don't want to overdo it. All right, sick. So I think I'm done with it. Um, I'm gonna have to put some uh, clear coat over it to protect it. You know, just make sure it doesn't get all beat up looking. And then I'll take it over to the shop and add it to the show. I didn't make it in time for the show, but at least it'll run during the month. Didn't get the debut, but that's okay. People are coming to the shop all the time, checking it out. So if you're in Seattle, just come by our shop in Capitol Hill, uh, right in the Pike and Pine corridor. Just go to our homepage, artprimo.com. Uh, it has a tab that says Art Primo Seattle, it has all the information you need about the store there. And uh, you can come on in and check out all the art we have. We have art shows every month. Lots of great stuff. Uh, you know, definitely love to have y'all come out. Anyways, so that's it. This is my uh, little review, uh, tutorial, demonstration, whatever you want to call these things. I don't even know what I'm calling them now. Uh, but you know, just trying out the Molotel markers, hyping them up. That way you guys get a chance to see what they're like. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Definitely, if you're looking for some markers, please hit us up, artprimo.com. We got the best prices on Molotov markers. I guarantee you we'll beat anybody's price. If we don't, give me a call. I will make sure I beat it. And uh, you can take that to the bank. Just ask for Dan. Uh, our number is 206-365-4083. Again, 206-365-4083. That's artprimo.com, your source. And before I go, I want to give you a little update we got something in today, something very special. We got a full container in, and of course that included the new Covers All cans. That's right, Molotow Covers All in color. Right here I got Lagoon Blue, Tulip Blue, uh, Current, Mad Sea Cherry, or Mad Sea uh, Psycho Pink. Uh, lots of hot colors, Molotow is smart. They went through all of their hot colors and added them to this line, and my friends, we are going to test these out in the wild somewhere. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go on a trip with my buddy Ed, my video filming partner, and him and I are gonna show you how these bad boys rock. Hopefully it'll be somewhere wet and rainy so we can really show you how they go. Anyways, that's it for the video. Again, be sure to shop with us, artprimo.com. We are your source for all things graffiti. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll be seeing you soon. All right, before I close out, I almost forgot one thing. Uh, this whole piece was dedicated to Stone Tier, and, and who Stone? This was for the political art show, by the way. Um, and who Stone Tier was actually the Reddit account for Hillary Clinton's infamous uh, admin for her email server. You know, the one that deleted all the thirty thousand plus emails. Uh, you know, during the investigation, the U.S. government gave him immunity, but he still refused to testify. He pled the fifth, and. Uh, but it was recently found a few years ago, he got doxxed and uh, he posted on Reddit asking for help to sanitize some of his emails. Uh, he said he was working for a very, very important client who happened to have Parkinson's disease as well too, which was a pretty interesting revelation because uh, the Clinton campaign hasn't admitted that yet. And um, <clears throat> anyway, so, so he wanted to delete these emails and it's on Reddit and uh, which is pretty, pretty illegal because this is stuff that they needed for the subpoena. Uh, but the, the thing that's really funny about it is, um, turns out he's a furry. 
And for all y'all that don't know what a furry is, um, basically those are the kind of people that wear like animal suits and you know they they do animal weird stuff and animals. You know, bless their heart. You know, everyone's got their own thing. But yeah, so that was Hillary Clinton's dude. He was a furry. <laughs> So, we all got our fetishes, I guess. Anyway, so that was why he did a stone tier piece, because it was kind of topical and it was the political art show. So, that's the context to it. I love you, Aaron Elliot. <laughs> Just hold your